grade sevens. Welcome to our next natural sciences lesson. I'm Helen and today we're going to be learning about insulating materials. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our knowledge of insulation and insulators and we're going to have a little bit of fun with it and we're going to see how you apply spontaneous everyday knowledge of insulation in your everyday life. So welcome to our fun food festival. We're going to have fun today making sure that the food at our food festival is either kept warm, if it should be warm, cold, if it should be cold, and not allowing the cold beverages to make the hot beverages cold. So we've got a lot of problems that we have to sort out today. And our first problem is it's a very hot day at the beach where our food festival is going to be held. And our food can be bought from food trucks. But having a, a restaurant where you've got set down stoves and fridges is one thing. When you are taking food out onto the street, you've got another problem. You haven't got big stoves and to keep things warm and big warming drawers and you haven't got big refrigeration units. So this is very much like if you took your food to school and you want to make sure that your food is kept warm at school or that in summertime your food is kept cool. So we need to think about how we can insulate food when we don't have big refrigeration units or warming units like we have at home. So first of all, we're going to meet Pete. And Pete is the pizza guy. Now let's look at his problem and see if we can solve it for him. Pete says, I need some containers to serve my hot pizza slices in. The containers must keep the pizza warm, but it mustn't burn the customer's fingers. And Pete asks us, should I serve the pizza on metal plates? Please help. All right, what do you think? What's going over in your mind? Do you think it would be a good idea to take his pizzas from the oven, put them onto metal plates and serve them to the customers? Will they stay warm on the metal plates and will the customer's fingers be burnt or not? So let's remind ourselves about the theory behind insulation. Remember, what we talk about or what we mean in science when we talk about heat, we're talking about a transfer of energy. Remember that heat isn't a thing or a substance. Heat is simply the transfer of energy from something that has a lot of heat. It could be an object, it could be a substance, to something that has less heat. And this transfer of heat energy is what we talk about as heat. You've also learned that heat energy can be transferred by means of conduction. And that is when particles touch each other. So we're looking mainly at how heat moves through solids. Convection, and remember, convection is when we had currents in both liquids and in gases. And these currents of less dense particles rising and then more dense as they get uh, more density, they drop again and we have these circulating currents. And remember that radiation is through an open space from one object radiating heat to another object and the radiation is by waves. So those are the ways that heat energy is transferred. And when we look at insulation, we are looking at 
reducing or completely blocking that transfer of heat. So insulation reduces the rate at which the energy is transferred. So we've got energy transferred from the object with more energy to the object with less heat energy and insulation is going to block that transfer in some way. It's going to slow the process of heat energy transfer. So it stands to reason if we want to keep this item hot, we need to stop it from transferring its heat energy away. In the same way, if we want to keep this item cool, that means we're going to have to stop other items from transferring their energy to it. And the only way we can do it is by blocking that transfer with an insulator. So let's get back to our uh, problem at hand with Pete, the pizza guy. Remember that he wants to keep his pizza warm. That's important. He wants to serve it on a container or on a plate or in a container or on a plate. And he wants to know if he should use metal plates. And his other concern is that he does not want to burn his customer's fingers. So what do you know about metal and heat energy transfer? Do you remember all about conduction? And conduction is where the heat is going to be transferred from particle to particle because the particles are vibrating. They have lots of kinetic energy. And as they move with this kinetic energy, they bump into each other and they transfer the heat energy from particle to particle. And this works particularly well in metals. So if Pizza Pete serves his pizza on a metal plate, what we're going to see is the warmth from our pizza is going to be conducted to the metal plate. And if you are now going to hold the metal plate, that heat energy is going to be conducted to your hand. And yes, you could very well burn your fingers. But the other thing is that the plate is going to get hot and that heat energy is going to transfer away from the pizza. So your pizza will actually get cooler while it is on the metal plate. What should we do instead? Well, we should advise Pete that he should serve his pizzas on some surface that is an insulator, that is going to prevent the conduction of heat from the pizza to the plate. So our ideas here, what, what could we choose to serve the pizza on? How about serving it on a cardboard plate? Because paper and cardboard is a good insulator. And if we insulate the plate, we're not going to end up burning our hands and the pizza will stay warm for longer because it's not transferring its heat energy across to the plate. So do you think we've solved this, the, the problem for Pete? We've advised him no metal plates. Let's rather use something like a cardboard box or even a piece of cardboard that is going to be acting as a plate. But we've got another problem. We move on to our next food truck. And here is Ida, the ice cream lady. Now, she has a different problem. She needs to think of ways, or she needs us to help her, think of ways to keep her ice creams cold on a hot day and so that the ice creams don't melt. Now, let's have a look at what we're talking about when we're talking about melting ice creams on a hot day. We know that our ice cream is icy cold. 
We know that the air around the ice cream is very hot. So tell me something. Does the cold move to the hot or does the heat move from the hot to the cold and cause it to melt? Remember that cold simply means lack of heat. It's not something that can move at all. So the cold stays precisely where the cold is, but the heat energy from the surroundings gets transferred to the colder item and that causes the ice cream to melt. So we have a look at something like a cooler box. And our cooler box is made out of insulating material. A cardboard box is not going to be the best idea. We leave the cardboard for the pizza guy. But we're going to look at the materials that make up our cooler box. First of all, we're going to use plastic. Because plastic is a good insulator. But we're going to take it one step further. We're going to also incorporate air because air is also a good insulator. So if you think about your cooler boxes, there's a layer of plastic, there's a layer of air and another layer of plastic. And the air is trapped between two layers of plastic and that makes the walls of the cooler box an excellent insulator because what we're doing is we're going to put the cold things inside the cooler box, we're going to shut the cooler box and we're going to therefore pre prevent heat energy from getting into the cooler box. So this time we're insulating it the, the, the ice cream from the heat in the surroundings getting into the cooler box or getting to the ice cream to melt them. So we've solved Ida's problem. We've told her to use cooler boxes that have plastic and air to insulate them. We have our third problem. This is Beverage Ben and he serves hot drinks as well as cold beverages and he serves them in insulated cups so he understands what we learned the other day about cardboard corrugated cardboard insulating and styrofoam and he's probably going to use a plastic or a styrofoam for his cold beverages and he can put ice in them as well he has sealed them so that heat energy cannot either move from the environment into our cold drink and cannot move from our hot drink into the environment. So he's got all of those bases covered. But here he's got a problem. In his food truck, he serves both hot and cold drinks. How does he prevent the hot drink machine from allowing it heat to be transferred across to the iced cold drink machines. Well, here you need to understand that either the machine, the whole machine itself, has to be insulated, and that would be a good idea. So why don't we put a nice plastic, not a metal container, around our machines themselves, and then we must increase this distance so that the heat energy is not going to be able to be transferred. So what if we tell him, keep the cold machines at one end of your food truck and the hot machines at the other end of the food truck, insulate both drink machines and hopefully that is going to keep the one kind of beverage completely separate from the other kind of beverage and their machines will be separate. We're certainly not in the heat truck, uh, in the food truck, going to put those machines right next to each other. So we've helped out at the food festival and I hope you also understand how you can apply this in your own lives by keeping your own lunch either warm or cool depending on what you want to eat that day for lunch. And also remember, it's not a good idea to put your fridge and your stove right next to each other 
in the kitchen. So lots of practical application stuff today, and I've enjoyed that with you, and I hope that you'll join me next time when we continue to learn about insulation. But for today, grade sevens, bye. Thank you.